always fun to change things up, ain't it? So, getting right back into it, and working our way backwards before we get to the main dish, let's take a minute to look at the producers. We've got Kaoru Yasumi, whose previous pre-care producer credits include Only Healing Good, and otherwise she's mostly been a background artist for other shows. Next up, representing ABC Animation, no not that one, we have Kanako Tada in her first producer role, though she has worked in advertising for Heart Catch, Sweet, and Doki Doki. Lastly, and someone who we're going to focus on a lot on in this video, we have representing ADK Emotions, Fumi Yazuki. First of all, they have the most pre-cure producer credits spanning from Hug Toe to Healing Good, but what I find the most interesting are some of their other anime credits, which include all three seasons of Fruits Basket and two seasons of Kuroko's Basketball. The former I bring up because of Yuma Uchida and how he went from the rejected Cat of the Zodiac to the love interest and maybe the Tuxedo Mash Jr. of the show. It's very possible that they suggested Yuma be in the show, as well as a new direction that they may take, but more on that in just a bit. But yeah, I usually don't talk too much about producers, as their input isn't always all that consistent across the franchise, except for maybe this one, as we'll soon see. Moving on to the artistes, music will be handled by Shiho Teda, which if you're subscribed to this channel, you know that we stand for this artist and the great work she has done for Healing Good and Tropical Rouge. Nothing much else really to say other than looking forward to another great OST for this, and maybe even the next season hopefully. Color design will be done by Nami Kyota in her first time working on a pre-cure TV series, though she has worked on Smile and Tropical Rouge's films. Rie Ida is credited as the art director for the series, and this is an interesting credit. Not so much for the person herself, as she has remained a consistent and good artist, having credits spanning from Gold Princess to now, with ironically the one exception being the other food based season, Kira Kira. But what's more surprising is that, as far as I know, this franchise really hasn't had an art director, just a bunch of artists throwing in their stuff. I'd like to think that Toy is trying to keep things a little more consistent, but the inner cynic in me is saying that they're just trying to pinch their pennies. We'll just have to wait and see how it all turns out. Anyway, there is still also an art designer with Yutaro Masta, who has a massive tenure for this franchise that I don't feel like listing off, you can see for yourself. Next up, we have the character designer, Kyoko Yufu, whom I can't say I'm all too familiar with, as I think her only other character design credit was for this show. And yes, this is a light novel adaptation, as you might be able to tell by that long and pretentious looking title. Anyway, her work on this franchise specifically has mostly consisted of key animation for again Hagato to Healing, but unfortunately Sakuga Boru has failed me and I can't find clips of her work. However, a friend of mine has assured me that she is quite talented as he follows her on Twitter and has even informed me that she seems to be besties with Yukiko Nakatani, which would explain some similarities in their aesthetics. So going off of his opinion, I am at least sold for now, though I will say these last two credits have me a little iffy. First up, we have Toshino Fukuzawa as the director. Now, relatively for this franchise at least, they're still fairly new, having directed and storyboarded just a few episodes across Healing and Tropical, though they did also direct the excellent Miracle Leap film. And the Healing Good episodes they did direct were quite good, especially that first episode. So at the very least, they have a good sampling for this franchise, and they are experienced having served as a series director for over 200 episodes of One Piece. So again, I guess we'll We'll see how they handle a full series. However, the credit that I think as always is going to be the biggest X factor for deciding the quality of this show is the series composition aka the head writer Sawako Hirabayashi. Hmm, why does that name sound so familiar? As I said at the beginning of this review, in spite of having a lot of Jin Tanaka's writing quirks, including his humor, this episode wasn't written by him, but rather a brand new writer to the franchise, Saoko Hirabayashi. She actually has worked on Pretty Care before, but in the animation department, not the writer's room. Yep, she was a secondary writer for a series from two years ago, and just quickly going over episodes, we have okay-ish, not great, pretty good, Eh, and oh wait, she did that hilarious episode? Actually, can we flash back to a bit from that episode's review? She might be a little bit more in her element here. Yep, she actually has written for sports anime, just not volleyball. 
Yes, she has not only scripted episodes across all three seasons of Kuroko, but she also wrote the light novel spinoff, Replace. Okay, now everything is starting to fall into place. Yeah, okay, so these are just my deductions, so take this all with a very heavy grain of salt, but I wonder if Hirabayashi was handpicked by Yasuki based off of her work on Kuroko's basketball, because otherwise, she really hasn't worked on Precure or any other Magical Girl series to really prove her worth just yet. She also has no cooking anime credit as far as I can tell. What she does have though, are more credits for shoujo manga adaptations like Wolf Girl at Black Prince, which if I remember correctly, was a pretty good rom-com from back in the day. But yeah, that combined with their work on Kuroko's basketball makes me wonder how much are the boys, specifically Takumi, are going to play into things, perhaps even with a new kind of hero? A theory that some of my close friends and commenters have pointed out to me is the possibility that they might bring in a male precure. I mean, I've mentioned it a few times myself, mostly in regards to my boy Ryo and how he was robbed of becoming Cure Waffles. Now truth be told, I was half joking back then as I wasn't expecting them to turn him into a precure and quite frankly, I don't think they'll do it for this show either. That said, I do think it would have been nice to have seen Ryo take a little bit more of a prominent position in the show, and at the very least get some merch. That way, they could have at least have slowly started to integrate the idea of a proper male hero into this franchise. Again, they don't have to make them into pre cures and they really shouldn't take over a franchise that was built off of appealing to a young girl's demographic, that'd just be insane. But at the same time, if the other members of the Toy Trinity are expanding their horizons, well, I don't see why this franchise shouldn't either. Yeah, take a look at their Tokusatsu brethren for a minute or two. Kamen Rider has finally got around to fully investing in a female rider with Jean. And yes, they named her after the French warrior saint who has gotten a ton of attention in anime. I'm guessing so that even if they don't get any new female fans, they can also rely on those lonely little weeps who will buy anything related to their French waifu. Why are you staring at me like that? But yeah, while Sakura Igarashi is far from the first female writer ever, and they have had some pretty badass ones, one, they haven't always had the best representation, especially in the beginning. <laughs> And B, she has been confirmed by the creators to be considered the third official rider of her show, even getting her own unique driver. Yeah, female riders have mostly shared or used carbon copies of drivers primarily used by their male counterparts. Thus fans more likely bought something like the Bug Visor's Vi to roleplay as Kamerad Kronos rather than Kamerad Poppy, whose gasha was sold separately anyway. However, with Jean and her Libera driver, the message is clear, as not only is everything being properly sold in one package, but in her show proper, she is fighting alongside her older brothers, as if to subliminally suggest that's how their toys should be played with, and preferably all be bought together for Christmas. I mean, nothing against the show itself, as I actually have been really enjoying Kamurai Revise, aside from some slight racism, because it is toy. Still, I am glad that Kamen Rider has gotten some proper female representation after some frankly awful depictions in the past, and the character herself has been organically woven into Kamen Rider Revise. Sakura went through a great arc throughout most of the first core of the series, where she was able to acknowledge her own shortcomings, allowing her to eventually fight alongside her brothers. She didn't just like take over the show, or was treated like a lesser member of the cast, but rather like the little sister who was always there, and was extended the invitation to play with her big brothers. Plus she has an S tier mascot character as a partner. <laughs> Meanwhile, while Super Sentai has always had female representation of varying degrees of success, their next season, Dome Brothers, is breaking down some other barriers by having the first male pink Sentai with Kishi Brother, who's supposed to have a crane motif, though he looks more like a Slender Man. Point is, and bringing this back to Precure, there was always an option to bring in a wider audience, and I think that's why specifically Yasuki and Hirabayashi were brought in. They both have experience working on shows that have a lot of pre boys in their cast, in particular Kuroko, that has resulted in a fan base that has male fans since it is a shonen, but also some females who like them sway boys. My friends have also told me that it's a well written series, and they think Hirabayashi will do a good job here, but I digress a little. Based 
on this evidence, it does feel like they are trying to bring in a male audience and not just the big friends, but maybe even a young boy demographic that has at least a passing interest in Precure, whilst also maintaining their core demographic as Tuxedo Mask Jr. here could appeal to the girls in the same way Jean appeals to the lonely otaku. Stop going back to me! Again, these are mostly just my own crazy theories and deductions, so don't take my word for it, but I do agree that if this is Takumi and he has this much of a presence in the show's main poster and homepage, then they have to be investing more than a little into the character. Now, as for my personal opinion on whether or not they should go this direction, I say, eh, why not? I mean, honestly, it all comes down to execution. I would have never gotten half as invested in Ryo if he wasn't one of the best characters in that show and stood out even amongst the other guys in this franchise. I mean, Seiji was a pretty good character, and he certainly earned his spot in the NHK popularity polls, perhaps that's another reason why they're doing this now, but he was brought down by that awful love triangle subplot, and while Henri was decent representation, he wasn't quite fleshed out as a character, at least not enough to make up for the overly melodramatic writing of Hugto in general. Representation can be good, but it shouldn't be the end-all be-all, and honestly with Toy, I have low expectations of such. Again, gracias dentalma! But in that same breath, seeing what they've done with Kamurai Jean, I am least willing to give them a shot. Because, at the very least, it's not a bad idea to just let the siblings play nice. Still, what do y'all think? Should there be a more prominent male hero in this franchise? Feel free to comment below. Whatever direction they go, I just hope that this staff can work well together, because as of right now, I'm not totally sold on them just yet, but I'm willing to give them a chance. And yes, I know I said I was going to look at the cast interviews, but this last section ended up completely taking over the original video. I might make another video based on them and any other developments about this new season as they come out, but we'll see. And until then though, Feral Fanami friends and- uh, Oh hey, Love Cup, how are you doing dude? Um, how was your vacation? Love Oh, that's good to hear. Love, love. What'd you say about my mom?